This is John Metter. Welcome to the Man to Man podcast. And we are actually walking through the subjects I'm talking to you about today in men's meetings uh, that take place early on Tuesday mornings at Cross City Church. And I'm coming directly to the podcast in order to communicate those to all men who may not be able to make that meeting. And we're really dealing with some of the manhood issues that we don't often get to talk about. Uh, so Man to Man is all about that. And uh, really a big component of Man to Man is being able to have conversations between men. We see it set at round tables, and those round tables are uh, basically the environment for us to talk to each other face to face, man to man. Uh, one recent study shows that of those people that left the church and maybe even left the faith later on, uh, community was the number one thing they missed uh, in all the things that church provided and all the things that uh, the community of faith provided. They miss the community of interacting one with another the most. And uh, so we really want to build that community with men. And uh, so just by way of uh, doing that, we're having this podcast and hope that you'll get some uh, important information, some great revelation from Scripture, and uh, some great principles for living the life that we're called to live as men. So today, as we talk about man to man, I, I just want to warn you, I want to tell you that the whole focus of this podcast uh, today is be alert. Men need to be alert. We need to be aware of our surroundings, things that are happening, uh, even as I speak, movements that are happening, different kind of emphases that are happening, redef redefinition of manhood, re redefining womanhood and family, all that's happening around us. And so it's all the more important that we understand who we are as men and what God has called us to. And so that's what man to man is all about. So I'm going to begin today with 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13 and 14, and then I'll, I'll go through four principles of this. Um, but these two verses are great verses at the end of the letter that Paul wrote to Corinth. And basically, Corinth was a place in chaos, confusion. Um, they didn't know where uh, truth was supposed to come from. They didn't know who to believe, who not to believe. They were confused about uh, spiritual gifts. They were confused about uh, wisdom. They were confused about uh, men and women in the church. Um, they were just confused. And as a result of that, Paul writes a letter of reprimand and instruction. And at the very end of the letter, chapter 16, he makes some statements that uh, are going to be the basis for what we say in Man to Man in our podcast. And here are the two verses, 1 Corinthians 16, verse 13 and 14. He sums a lot of things up by saying these five things. He says, be on the alert, stand firm in the faith. Act like men, be strong. Let all that you do be done in love. I'll read that again, and, and I hope you can pick up the five things that I'm talking about. Be on the alert. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. Let all that you do be done in love. So that's our key passage for the man-to-man -man emphasis. And, uh, and I believe it was written to help make men aware of their role and the importance to the culture. You know, one of the most in, important and dangerous factors in our lives today is the threat of slow attrition. When things change slowly in our environment, we're not always aware of what's happening and how they affect us. And one day, we wake up, and life is very different. I think we can say that today. Often I talk in terms of how the world has changed since COVID back in 2020. The COVID epidemic that swept the world did change a lot of things. But I think I can even more accurately say over the next ten, over the last 10 years and even the last 20 years, greater things than COVID changed. And we're reaping the benefits or the effects of that now. They're not really benefits. They're really the effects of confusion, the effects of uh, not being uh, clear on uh, the different elements that culture is confusing us on. And that would include manhood and womanhood. You've probably heard of the old frog and the kettle syndrome. And that's the, the idea, the illustration that if you put a frog in a kettle of normal water, um, he won't try to escape. And if you just turn the heat up slowly until you get to a boiling point, just turn it up two degrees every few minutes, and the frog becomes used to the heat and not really aware or alarmed or alert to the fact that he needs to get out of the kettle. 
And I don't know how many times I've heard that illustration used. It turns out, as I did a little bit of that in-depth uh, Google research, internet research, it turns out that several scientists decided to put that, that, uh, that theory to the test, and it turns out the frog does become aware of the heat in the kettle and does do his best to escape. And if he can escape, he will escape. So that illustration is kind of a moot illustration these days. However, I would also say that in culture, we seem not to realize that the temperature of culture is changing around us and we seem not to want to struggle against that culture. Rather, we acquiesce or give in to that culture. So let me ask you, after posing that statement, what in the culture of manhood has changed in recent years? Now, what do you think is the most alarming change? At the end of uh, my podcast, I'm going to come back to three questions that I want you to ponder. And the first one is, what's the greatest change related to manhood in the last 20 years? I want you to think through that as I talk in a, in a few moments. And then the second question is, what's the most obvious threat to younger men today? And we ask men around our tables today what their answer was to those two questions, and I have a lot of, a lot of answers for you. The third question is, what's the greatest spoken need of men around you today? So the greatest change, the greatest threat, the greatest need. So think about those for a few moments as we come back to the principle of be on the alert. I want to give you four principles today. First of all, I want to encourage you to be alert to your spiritual progress, to your spiritual growth. Now, Paul said this to the Corinthians in the verse I read a moment ago. To encourage them to keep, keep growing towards Christ's likeness, to not give up to not, uh, not reach a plateau. No one should settle for diminished spiritual growth. If we're not growing, we're dying. Uh, take the human body, for example. The day we stop making muscle and the day we stop exercising our muscles, we start to atrophy, we start to fade. Consider the impact of gravity on the human body. Everything that's not muscle will eventually droop. That's true of men, that's true of women, that's true of all of us. And so you've got to stay firm. You've got to stay strong. And to do that, you've got to exercise. But the same is true, spiritually speaking, as well. Because of the gravity of the world and the system of sin, whatever is not exercised will begin to fade. Even in our later years, the challenges of spiritual growth must be met. Otherwise, we miss opportunities to become like him, to serve him, to be all that we're called to be. So Paul begins by saying, be alert to your spiritual progress. Nobody ever arrives until Jesus comes back. When Jesus arrived, we all arrive. But until Jesus Christ comes back, we're all in a state of spiritual growth and, and should be. One of my great heroes in the Bible is the man Caleb. At 85 years of age, he and Joshua were the two faithful ones of the 12 spies. And uh, as they came back again to the land of promise, after all the Israelites that had refused to obey the Lord and go into the promised land, after they had all died off, only Joshua and Caleb are left, and, and um, as Caleb looks at what's still yet to be conquered in the promised land, he says to the Lord, give me that mountain, that big mountain, uh, where the most intimidating of creatures are, where the most intimidating armies are, give them to me. Because I am now still uh, able in body, I'm still strong of spirit, and I want to capture this for Israel. I love that kind of mindset. It means that Caleb had not stopped growing. It means that Caleb wanted the challenges to be in front of him so he could meet those challenges in the power of the Lord. Now, I want to encourage you guys that, that it's easy to be put on the shelf. It's easy to put our Bible on the shelf. It's easy to, to shove our prayer life and, and to not be disciplined and to not be able to grow anymore. But it's important for us to dig into the Scripture, to learn new truths, to learn new disciplines and practices so that we can be all that God called us to be. Be on the alert to your spiritual progress. What are you doing today? Or what are you failing to do today that would cause you to grow? We want you to grow. We want you to become firm in your faith. The second alert is in another portion of Scripture. It's in Acts chapter 20, verses 28 through 31. And here's the principle that it will show us. It is to be alert for your family of faith. In Acts 20, Paul is leaving the church at Ephesus, and he's going to go travel. And so he says to the church, I've, I've not failed to proclaim to you the whole counsel of God. 
And uh, he said, but I know what's going to happen after I leave. He said, men will come in among you, and they'll have perverse ideas, and they'll be like wolves and the sheep. And he said, so be on the alert. And don't forget, for the space of these years, I have poured into you with tears. In other words, Paul says, I've done everything that needed to be done, and I want you to know that danger will always lie ahead, and I'm not there anymore to take care of you. So you need to be on the alert for your family of faith, for those around you. Make sure the shepherd, the shepherding takes place, that the family of God is taken care of. You know, our family of faith is our team, our spiritual team. It could be spouse or friends or other members of the body of Christ. And what this passage tells us is that we need to be alert and watch out for them. Fight for their health. Fight for their protection. You know, the phrase, no man left behind, is the motto of one of our armed forces. And really, all of our armed forces have some form of that. Um, and the reason that commitment is so real is for morale. And it's so real because we need it. And the phrase is used in the U.S. military, but it first originated with Greek mythological figures who would do anything to, re to rescue those who had been captured by the enemy. So, no man left behind. When I'm speaking to a group of men, I want them to look around them and see the guys that are around them and say, do not leave these men behind. Be alert for the family of faith. Be sure you help grow them. Years ago, uh, I remember on a Sunday morning seeing a guy that looked troubled. His countenance wasn't good. And uh, I decided to ask him how he was doing, and he gave me the classic man answer, the word fine, F-I-N-E, I'm fine. And uh, gave me a little smile that wasn't too convincing. Long story short, I, I invited him to lunch, and, and I said, is everything really fine? And he said, it's not fine. My life is falling apart. And uh, he said, if you can give me some counsel, I would, I would really appreciate it. And we entered into a, a time of uh, mentoring, and uh, this, this guy just really opened up, and we had a great time together, and he began to really grow strong in the Lord. And uh, I know that that's not possible for all of us all the time, but I do know that we need to be alert to our family of faith. Look around you at other men and see if their countenance is up or down. See if they have needs that you might be able to help meet. Way back when I was first in ministry, uh, those of you who know me know that I have a hearing impairment. I'm deaf. I've lost 95% of my hearing, and that was true from uh, childhood onward. But at the age of about 28, I'd been pastoring a couple of years, and uh, an audiologist did a, a hearing appointment on me in order to secure new hearing aids. And her conclusion was I was losing more hearing, and I would soon be completely deaf. And that overwhelmed me. The idea that I could hear a little bit mag amplified by hearing aids was uh, doable. God's grace has always met me in that, and it's always been encouraging to see how God got me through all the conversations I needed to be in. But this was a blow. This hit me hard. If I were to lose all of my hearing, how would I function as a pastor, as a husband, as a father-to-be? Uh, how would I function? I just didn't know the answers to that. And I confided in a friend of mine whose name was Randy, and, and I'll never forget Randy's response. He paused for just a moment. He heard what my concerns were, and then he said, Well, brother, he said, if you lose all your hearing, at least you'll lose it all when you have a church behind you, a group of men who love and believe in you, and he will help you through this. You will not have to do it alone. And I mean, that was an exclamation mark to me in my life at that time. I thought, man, he's, he's got a great point. I can't, I can't prevent any more hearing loss. I can appeal to the Lord, and God will do what he will do. But he surrounded me with men that encouraged me to move forward, and he gave me courage to deal with it. The truth is, I didn't lose any more hearing. But what I did gain in that one conversation was a man who knew how to encourage me, and uh, it stayed with me. So I want to encourage you to be alert to your family of faith. The third principle is be on the alert to the war that is all around you. In Ephesians chapter 6, the spiritual armor, the armor of God passages. And I love Ephesians chapter 6 because it talks about how to put on every piece of the armor of God. And uh, at the end of that, in verse 18, it uses this phrase, be on the alert. He said basically that you are to... Stand firm in your faith. You're to pray at all times. You're to petition the Lord, being alert in it with thanksgiving. And so basically, the call is to be alert in prayer. 
in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, Peter says, you know, you have an adversary. He's like a roaring lion. So be on the alert that he's there. He's seeking whom he may devour. And he may be trying to devour you. So the whole idea is look out for the spiritual war. Be prayerful about it. When I think of spiritual warfare, I think of deception. It's the primary tactic of the enemy. Let me make some statements to you that I think happen in spiritual warfare. If it's too good to be true, it's not true. If it makes sense to you but not others, it doesn't make good sense at all. You know, we all have blind spots. We even have blind seasons. And we need the man-to-man input of others who are alert toward us and alert for us. In an earlier survey that I referred to uh, in previous talks, um, I, I quoted a survey made up of people who had left the, the church, first of all, and many of them had left the faith. And they gave all the reasons for why they left the church and some left the faith later on. But when the question was asked, what do you miss most about the church of Jesus Christ? And their answer was, we miss the community. We miss the fact that there are people there that love us, that care for us, that may believe somewhat like us, and we miss that. We don't find that anywhere else in life. You know, they'd miss the band of brothers. That's what they missed. So that is an incredible statement about the reality and power of community and being alert, watching out for each other in the war that we're in. No man left behind indeed. So important for us to realize that battle. Then number four, be alert to the return of Jesus. Matthew 24 and 25 are passages where Jesus is talking about the signs of his return. And, um, and in, in verse 42 of 24, chapter 24 of Matthew, Jesus sums a lot of this up by saying, Therefore be on the alert, for you do not know what day your Lord is coming. And it just summarizes the fact that seasons will come and seasons will go. Uh, we'll have victories, we'll have failures, but the ultimate person we're to be looking for is Jesus and his return. Be on the alert for the return of Jesus. Now, how does that help me as a man? Well, when I'm on the alert for Jesus to return, I realize who I ultimately answer to. It's not my friends, it's not my wife, it's not my church. Ultimately, I answer to Christ. And I have to be reminded of that from time to time because I can always achieve a certain level of respectability with man. But only God knows my whole heart. Only God knows uh, my whole intent. So it's so very important for me to realize I answered him ultimately. And, and that makes me a whole lot more humble, a whole, whole, whole lot more transparent when it comes to all the things that I may uh, struggle with or may challenge, be challenged by. So I want to encourage you, be on the alert to the return of Jesus. It really puts everything in perspective. And nothing that we love here on earth is still going to be here when Jesus comes back. I mean, our loved ones, of course, and we'll see them in heaven, but they'll be transformed just like we are. None of our possessions, none of our things, my old truck that I put so much time and effort into, the house that, that we helped build, that we love, uh, none of those things will still be here. But when I, when I see the return of Christ, it means I stand before him face to face, and I get to hear from him. I get to see him and know him as he really is, and that's who I really need to be living for. That's who I really need to be on the alert for. So those four things for you today that I want you to be alert in. Be alert to your spiritual progress. Be alert for the family of faith. Be alert for the war that you're in. Be alert for the return of Jesus Christ. Now, can I come back to those questions? What is the greatest change related to manhood in the last 20 years? We had all kinds of answers that came from our men, but probably the predominant one was the definition of what a man is. So many accusations about the toxicity of manhood today so many bad examples of men. But is there a biblical definition, a biblical ideal? Of course there is a biblical ideal. His name is Jesus Christ. And we're called to follow him completely in spite of the change of definition of men and women over the last 20 years. And what is the most obvious threat to younger men today? And again, it was pretty universal, the lack of definition. The fact that young men today are shamed into doing this or that or not doing this or that, and sometimes they're shamed for being men. And it's really important for us to recapture the definition 
and to overcome the threat of confusion. And I want to encourage you today, the one, the one way to do that is to have conversation with men who know what it means to be a biblical man and to grow together in that. The third question, what's the greatest need of men around you today? I, I guess I could summarize all that by what one young man said. He said, man, I miss peers. I need peers around me. I need a community of men around me to be my example and to urge me to do the courageous thing, whatever that is. I love that answer. And so I'm going to summarize this podcast with that answer right there. We need to rise up and be the men that God has called us to be to each other and to the Lord and to all those that we would positively influence. I want to encourage you in your manhood journey. Thank you for joining this podcast. And I hope you'll stay with us through all the episodes as we talk about man-to-man kind of topics. We'll hit all kinds of them during this series. Thank you for joining us. God bless.